Okay, so in this lecture we are going to discuss uh, the notion of analytic continuation and this is uh, going to bring us to the close of our discussion on complex variables and applications and so before we move on to the next topic it's useful to um, you know discuss briefly a very beautiful idea and that's the idea of analytic continuation okay so we have seen several examples where you know analyticity uh, you know impose many constraints on a function a function which is analytic uh, somehow seems to sense its value far away from where it is right if you know something about a function at a certain point or in some region then you can say somehow forces uh, the value that this function takes you know far away right so we have seen for example that analytic functions uh, have derivatives to all orders we have seen how the Cauchy integral formula also suggests this kind of you know uh, underlying correlation between you know the value of a function at a point and far away from it as well right so in this lecture we will uh, look at what is called analytic continuation suppose you have a function which is you know defined in terms of a series and Taylor series as we have seen has a region of convergence there is a circle of convergence inside which this Taylor series is you know convergent and so the function is well defined inside this circle of convergence now the question is is it possible to find a function which is well defined in a broader region and which still agrees with the value that the function takes in the region where it is already defined and such that it's analytic everywhere right so the answer turns out to be yes it's possible to you know do this analytic continuation and in fact there is a unique way to you know continue analytically right so we are not going to go into the specifics of or the you know, detailed way of stating these theorems but i mean basically the idea is we'll illustrate this idea of analytic continuation with the help of a rather familiar example right so consider this series 1 plus z plus z squared so on you know going all the way up to infinity and we know that this taylor series is convergent when mod z is less than 1 now Suppose, I mean, this is the information we have. Using this, can we construct a meaningful Taylor series about some other point, right? Suppose we choose some point Z0, and in order to evaluate the Taylor series expansion about this point, so let's first write down a general expression, right? So, so we start with this expression for the function f of Z, but then we want to be able to rewrite this as, you know, in place of Z to the n, we want to write it as Z, Z, you can think of z to the n itself as being expanded about the point z0 right so that's going to be basically a binomial expansion where you know k goes from 0 to n and n choose k z minus z0 the whole to the k z0 to the n minus k right so this is just simply writing z to the n as z minus z0 plus z0 the whole power n and then i have just used the binomial expansion so now basically you, if you look at this this looks like summation over k going from 0 to infinity a k times z minus z naught to the whole k now where a k is given by you know summation over n which goes from k to infinity and choose k z naught to the n minus k right i'm just using the fact that um you know i'm collecting all these terms where powers of z minus z naught to the k come up and if i choose a particular uh, k so that's a k and that is going to actually involve a an infinite sum where k goes all the way, uh, n goes from um, k to infinity and so you can check this so basically the point is that um, there is a way to convert a Taylor series about one point and rewrite it as a Taylor series about another point basically right now this whole thing can be understood in a transparent way if we just use what is called a master representation of the original function. So although we write, we started with this Taylor expansion, we can we also know that in fact this sums to one over one minus z, right? So it is one over one minus z, and in fact if you look at this, although the left hand side, so this Taylor series is convergent only when mod z is less than one, but on the other hand the right hand side is is actually a meaningful function it's an analytic function at all points 
z except z equal to 1. So there is a singularity at z equal to 1, but other than that, it's actually an analytic function at any other point. So we can in fact use this to come up with a, a Taylor expansion at about some other point, z0. Like what we were trying to do earlier, you know, this ak, we can work this out by rewriting this 1 over 1 minus z as 1 over 1 minus z0 minus z minus z0, right? So we artificially sort of put this z0 in here and then we pull out this one, one, 1 over 1 minus z0. So then we have, we have to expand 1 over 1 minus z minus z0 divided by 1 minus z0. So then we argue that basically this is like the original series itself that we started, right? Uh, I mean, as long as mod of z minus z0 divided by mod of 1 minus z0 is less than 1, it's in fact valid for us to be to expand this as, you know, this kind of a, an expansion. So now this is valid in a different circle of convergence, right? Basically, we are working with the same function, really, but now the validity has changed to a different region, right? So this picture below illustrates what has happened. So initially we started with the circle of convergence, which is basically the circle defined by mod z equal to 1. But then now if I were to expand about the same Taylor series itself, uh, I know I expand about a different point or the, the same function itself, if I expand about a different point, its validity is in a different circle. And then you, I can I can go to another point in here and then expand about that point and then that's going to give me another circle. Go to another point. Basically, I can get a you know different Taylor series expansion about different points and this is going to be valid at all points except of course there is one singularity which is a genuine singularity and where it's non-analytic for sure, right? So this function. But the key point is that we started with a function which was analytic in a region but we managed to, you know, find a, an analytic function, which is like a master function for this, which is valid in a much bigger domain. In this case, it turns out to be the entire plane except that point, right? And this was entirely forced upon us just from our information that we had in a small region, right? So this turns out to be quite a general result. So in fact, this is something we have already done when we generalize the idea of sine of x. Right, so we started with uh, sine of x as being defined only for real values of x, and then we said, can we come up with a function which which can take you know uh, complex arguments uh, in such a way that uh, you know sine of x and sine of z are the same whenever z becomes uh, real, but the overall function that you have is analytic. So it turns out that there's a unique way of doing it. Right, so subject to certain conditions of you know what is a uh, you know smaller domain that you're you're interested in and how you're expanding it, uh, extending it and so on there are details about uh, you know the precise statement of the theorem but basically the idea is that you cannot get any other way of uh, you know extending sine of x or e to the power x or any of these functions hyperbolic functions all of these which we extended to the full complex plane but it was not done in some arbitrary way it was done in such a way that the function is analytic everywhere, right? So this is a, you know, powerful aspect of analytic functions. This won't happen, for example, if you're working in, you know, functions of a real variable, you cannot, you know, uh, there is no unique way of extending your function to a bigger region, such that, you know, the uh, two functions overlap in your smaller region, and then you impose some other nice properties. It's, it doesn't work the way, uh, you know, analytic continuation works for. Uh, functions of a complex variable. Okay, so with this we come to a, a, an end of our discussion of uh, complex um, functions and applications of complex variables. Um, there are more things one could have done and perhaps in a slightly more advanced course which you, you know more details can be covered or you can use this material from here to build on this to study more advanced topics. But as far as we are concerned we come to an end for um, you know in, in regards to this topic and then we move on to the next topic starting from the next thank you